So good morning or good afternoon, Sharks. My name is Gabe O'Neill. I'm with Digital Accelerant. Today, we are welcoming Robin Stern, text geek to the number 21,000 to get his information. And he's going to show us all about uh, our Google My Business page and uh, this grow.google thing, which I haven't heard of yet. I'm looking forward to that. Um, today's Wednesday, November 11th. Happy Veterans Day. If you've uh, anybody here has been in the service, we thank you for that. If, you have, if you're related to anybody in the service, we thank them for that as well. Um, all of these, and again, if you're looking for past, uh, I, I haven't recorded the, or I haven't put up the LinkedIn one from last time yet. I'm, I'll do that together with this one. But if you're looking for past webinars, Jorgen was asking about that. Um, they, they are all at that same link that you guys register for our networking events and our webinars next week, next Wednesday, we have a blitzer event. So please just keep going back to that same page and sign up for anything that you should so desire to do. So again, my name is Gabe O'Neill. If you pull out your phone and you text the word Gabe to the number 21,000, you will get my information. You create a new text in the two field where you normally put a, and, and this is for people who have digital cards. When people don't understand it, this is kind of what I tell them. I say, create a new text in the two field. Um, instead of putting that 10 digit phone number, just put, type in 21,000. And in the message field, simply type Gabe and that hit, hit the send button. Within about six seconds, you will receive my digital business card and it will have access to everything everything I want you to see, including my, uh, my Google reviews, my LinkedIn, Google reviews, hint, hint, LinkedIn, my uh, YouTube channels, all my social media channels. You can get on, uh, join my network. You can schedule an appointment with me. And there's also the uh, testimonial 13 of my clients right on the card. So this is really the, uh, the most of you uh, who already have cards know this. That it's just a very easy way to get your information out there for one to capture the information of the people that text your keyword and also to get your sphere to be able to refer you out by remembering two simple words that's really kind of uh, how sweet that is um, and if you text the word cards to twenty one thousand, you get um all the digital cards mostly people are in here let's see where we've got a dawn is irs to twenty one thousand. tara has two she is uh, the leader in the in the in the, in the double card oh, industry. She's the she, overachiever in the club. Yeah, she is pamper pamper and uh, strategy. Cheryl is profit. Uh, Lorraine is energy. Um, Jody is Jody, and Robin is geek. And I am Gabe to twenty one thousand. So check check all that out, please. Um, if you want anybody, I'm always w willing to have a one-on-one -on -one with any either existing client, new client, whatever client. Um, I just get on my calendar. My, my calendar is open and I will, I haven't thrown anybody off there. They're not yet anyway. So um, it's just calendly.com slash Gabe O'Neill. Our next event is um, tomorrow at 2.30. 2 I have to, I have to watch myself because I'm always screwing up these, these, um, these time slots. Tomorrow is definitely from 2.30 to 4. Uh, it's our networking meeting. You're all wel welcome to join. Uh, you just, again, register at that same link, and we hope to see you all tomorrow. But um, but um, I guess having said that, I can stop sharing and turn this basically over to Robin so that he can um, take it away from here. All right. Well, thanks very much, Gabe. I appreciate it. Thank you all for showing up today. And I will apologize right up front. I do this thing called Thrive for my friend Kim Kurkowski uh, represents. And uh, it does give you good mental acuity and quite a boost in energy. And I'm already kind of a highly strung individual. So raise your hand and wave if something goes down and you didn't catch it. All right. That's all. I'm just making sure that you, you have the ability. I'm watching the screen. So if I go blazing by something, please just stop me and say, hey, Robin, what was that? Uh, two, also, uh, I will try my best to not use interchangeable geek speak. I understand that there are lots of guys out there that'll use four different words to mean the same thing. And to the average user, that's useless. So the very first thing that I'm going to say is you need to have a Gmail address or a Google email address. And the reason I say that is because I want to clarify 
they're the same thing. Gmail is already a Google email address. That's a, your Google account is a Gmail account. But Google has allowed you to use your own branded email address now and set that up as a Google account. So you don't have to have a Gmail address anymore, but your email address does have to be registered as a Google account. So that's, I may say Google account or Google email. I may say Gmail. I mean the same thing when I say that, okay? I just wanted to clarify that up front because all of this works around your Gmail. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick and go through just some simple uh, steps that they have on this program. And I really am not one of those people that is going to uh, read off the, I hate it when people just read off of the uh, screen. So I promise you that I'm not gonna do that, but I will say that now as ready as I was, I just lost my slide deck. Well, that was pretty silly. So give me one second to grab this back and I will get it straightened out. The Grow with Google program has been known as the Google My Business program for many, many years. And it is it was created for people to get the Google products and get them in their hands. Um, Google does not want, uh, you're not Google's customer when you're working on your Google My Business page, okay? You are Google's product. That is a huge mindset I need you guys to understand. When you're searching for something, you're Google's customer. When you're the business being searched for, your customer through Google is gonna find you. So you're not the customer at this point, you're the product. And your job is to make your product look so good and so fresh to Google that Google wants to serve you up to its customer, which is the person searching for you, all right? So that's something you gotta get through your head is this is not for, for me to, 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 to be served by Google. This is for me to present myself to Google in such a way that they're not gonna even question when somebody says uh, nonprofit in Dallas, Georgia or nonprofit in Atlanta, they're gonna put me in front because my nonprofit Google information is so perfect and so up to date and I have so much activity, they love me the most. So just remember that, that you have to make yourself look absolutely the freshest, ready to go product. So when somebody Googles you, Google has the answer and you're the, you're the obvious choice, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you can't get lackadaisical with your Google business page. You can't get lackadaisical with asking for reviews and you can't get lackadaisical with posting. So here we go. Your Google business page starts with this idea that you are a local, local searching. Okay, we're not searching for you worldwide. We're not searching for you on the internet. We're searching for somebody locally. So understand that this is for local. Now, that doesn't mean you can only advertise in your little city. You can expand that search to almost include the entire country if you want, but you're gonna lose, you're gonna water it down. You're gonna dilute it. So you really want to tell Google, I'm gonna work in a certain area and this is the area I want you to serve me up to your customers. And the more specific you are, the less driving you have to do if you're somebody that drives to your clients and the less complaining you'll get from your clients saying, Google said you were only blah, 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 and here you are 25 miles away, and I didn't like that. So you don't wanna to have to deal with them, so keep it a little more specific, although you can go very wide. So here's real quick what we're gonna go through, the agenda, how to create it, how to manage it. By a show of hands, how many people here um, already have a Google business page? So we have uh, about half, it looks like, or more? Yeah, about half, okay, cool. So. Uh, That's how this, many are unsure if they have a Google. Okay, well, but there again, if you go to grow.google, scroll down just a little bit to where it says for small business, and then click on the one that says um, get my business online or, or it's, some, it's the first category. It'll let you know whether you have one or not. If you have one, it'll log you into your account. And if you don't, it'll start off with let's get your business on Google. What's the business name? And then you can just follow through those simple steps. I mean, they made it super easy. That's a white screen with one question in the middle. Just answer each question, walk through. One tidbit of advice, if you're doing that while we're talking, when you get to the point where it says, do you serve customers at your location? If you do not want your address listed, you say no. If you put, I serve customers at my location, this is a local search with a maps component. It's gonna put a pin on the map right where your business is. 
Now, I have a small base business, a home based small business. I had no problem with people knowing where my house was because they would come and drop computers off to us. So I didn't mind that at all. I have a big gun and a big dog. Come to my house if you want. But some people don't want that. So I understand. Totally cool. If you say I don't serve people, it'll allow you to set up a service area. So your county, a few cities around you, maybe a 500 mile radius, whatever it is you're comfortable with. So that's how you'll, you'll go through that. All right. But let's go ahead and step on here. Um, got a little video real quick. Let me know by show of hands if you can hear the audio on this. Can you hear? No? Okay. I didn't do the sharing right, Gabe. Hold on. Let me change it to make sure that you can hear the audio. I don't know if it's there or not. Let's stop the share. And then let's reshare. Make sure there it is. Gotcha. It was my fault. I wasn't sharing the computer sound. All right. There we go. Let's try it again. No? Okay, so it's just a gentleman talking about how Google's helped him promote his business and grow his business. So we'll go ahead and move on from there. I think it was there, Robin, but it was real. Real, real quiet? Okay. Okay, so what is this profile? This is it. And you've seen these. You've all searched. You've all seen this. This is pretty self-explanatory. A couple little things that I'd like to point out is this section right here on mobile has different things than on uh, desktop. So they have a function where you can actually have your customers direct message you to a phone number that you can pre-populate and they can write from your Google business page, click the message button and you can have an auto response that says, how can we help you today? And then when they text back, it'll go to whoever's phone number you want it to go to. So there's some things on the mobile version that you won't see on the uh, desktop version. So that's just a, a little piece of advice there with that. But again, if this is the number one landing page for 90% of your clients, this needs to be accurate. This needs to be up to date. It also is the place where Google is going to go initially to get their information when somebody Googles you. So let me explain that. You have your website, you have your social media, you have all the other places on, in the web where you are listed and you are known. And Google has these little guys, they're called spiders. They go out and crawl on the web. They actually put it together that way on purpose, spiders on the web, and they get all the information and they bring it back. But everything that it gets from all your other social media and website is paled in comparison to what Google's gonna take from your Google business page. Because this is verified information that their people have looked into and made sure it's accurate. So that's the information that they wanna to go to first. So it's up to you to make sure that you keep this very, very updated. And I wanna show you the page where that gets done. So if we go to one of my Google business pages, I, I won't throw anybody under the bus, Gabe, I'll just use mine, how about that? All right, let me sign in here and, and get one of mine here. This is the page you're gonna see if you land on your Google My Business page and you log in, all right? So this overview here, this whole screen here is an overview of everything that's going on. And you'll see on the left, here's our list of functions. The number one being the home page, which is Rob, this. Robin, excuse me. We're still seeing your um, PowerPoint. Oh, sorry about that. I changed to a different screen. So I apologize. The presenting on Zoom has been a new thing for me. So please forgive me for that. Let's try this. How about that? Is that better? better? Yes, okay. thank so you. So that's the, that's the main landing page that you'll see when you come into your Google business um, back office, if you will. And on the left is all the functions that we're going to be using. And I'm only going to touch on a few of them quickly. I offer this presentation as a one-to-one -one for 30 minutes, absolutely free. We will live do your page, walk through it step-by-step, -step, either in person or on Zoom, and we'll make sure that you understand all of this. So what I'd like to make sure of today is that you have a good grasp of if you have it and you're using it, these are the best practices to make sure you're getting the most at it, all right? So your homepage is here, your post page, that's obvious, your posts are your posts, right? But here's what I want you to understand. You need to be posting on Google probably once a day. And the reason I say that is, this is how Google knows you're open. If you're not, posting online and telling Google, 
I'm here and I have information for my customers, they may overlook you for that search. They may say, hey, um, some other facial scrub company came up this morning and did a post and had two reviews and six visits to their website. They're obviously fresher than Tara. She doesn't have the freshest uh, stuff anymore. So we're going to go to them. So your Google business page allows you to post. I would recommend daily, twice daily if you have something interesting. But understand this. Remember what I said at the beginning. Get the mindset right. This is not social media, folks. This is letting Google know you're open. A picture of the front of your store and great day in Dallas, Georgia is plenty. Uh, how you doing today is plenty. We're open for business today. That's it. We just want to tell Google, I've propped up in my door and I'm out here with my apron on sweeping my front porch. Okay? Literally, that's what you're doing. You're electronically telling them I'm here today. Okay? Now, another thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to get people to come to your website. Now, even though we don't use it a lot, that is part of it. Google's looking at that and they're saying, hey, people need to come to the website because that shows me activity. That shows me engagement of customers. Now, we get a bunch of activity from the Google business page and a lot of folks won't even complete their visit and go to our website. Because as you can see from the page itself, you know, you can get everything you need from the Google business page now. You have my address, you have my link to get the maps, you have my phone number all my hours, everything's there. So if they come to your website, it's kind of a big deal. And we'll talk about how to get them to do that before the end of this uh, presentation. So once we get done with posts, which I want you to do how often? Daily, sometimes twice if something cool comes up, okay? The info button is where you're gonna do all of your magic. This is where the editing and the actual data that's gonna be displayed to your customers gets edited and created and kept accurate, all right? So you always want to be 100% on top of this info tab. And you can see, I have multiple categories here. You can't create your own, but as you start to type, it'll populate categories and you can get as many as you want of the categories they have. I actually added electronics repair shop and computer support and services the other day. They didn't have them the last time I looked at my page and they did, so I've added in more categories now. That's more stuff Google's gonna find me for and put me in front of people for. Um, your service areas, you see, we just did the cities around us locally. We didn't get real deep because we don't wanna have to drive 40 or 50 miles to fix a computer. We wanna only go 15 miles or so. That is what's gonna tell Google only put their search stuff up in this area, all right? So that limits where they put me at so I don't get in front of somebody 100 miles away. Now, caveat to that, I was just in Ackworth and I Googled computer repair, but I added Dallas, Georgia, because I wanted to show somebody my Google business page. If I would not have said Dallas, Georgia, I would have got somebody in Ackworth, Georgia. See, so I might have come up because I list Ackworth as one of my top areas, but I'm not the closest, so I might have gotten bumped. But you can always add the city and state to find the business that you're looking for. All right. So tell people if they can't find you, add city state to it. Uh, again, hours, if you have special hours, like for holidays or COVID stuff, you put that under more. Here's where you keep all your stuff updated regularly. You can see we have special dates that were closed and open. Like here's our regular and here's our specialty hours, right? Um, also, your phone number. Guys, keep it accurate. You can get verified very quickly if your phone number is listed. So you always want this to be accurate. We actually have a Google phone number that we use for this business. So four people get the phone ringing at the same time, four people get the text messages at the same time, our customers never get missed. So if you wanna know more about a Google phone number, it's completely free, ask me about that on a one-to-one. -one. Website, obvious, right? What you do, now these are things you can list that you can actually pay for, or, or, I mean, can put prices on. You don't pay for any of this. Uh, that's something else you need to know. Google charges nothing for any of these products. If somebody comes to you and wants to charge you for Google My Business and they say that Google charges that, that they have to pay, they're lying to you. Now, there are businesses that will help you do this and they do charge for their services. We do that. If you want to have somebody hold your hand, set it all up, show you how to use it, give you 30 days worth of support, you can contact me, text Geek to 21,000. We do that. But 
Google doesn't charge anything for any of their products or services here. So do not ever let somebody say that Google wants to charge you this much money. All right. Um, COVID-19 update. That's a post that you can make. And I recommend every business that has a Google business page, put the COVID-19 update on there. It just makes sense that it's one more way you're showing Google, I care about my customers. I'm giving them all the information that I possibly can so they can make a good choice. Again, I'm not Google's customer right now. I'm Google's product. So make them so happy with you that they always put you at the top of the search results. That's your job. Okay. When you opened, doesn't matter. First day, whatever. We've been around for 13 years now. Um, and then photos, it says down here. And I'm going to get to photos because photos are a huge part. We are a visually driven society. You know as well as I do that people look at pictures and video. It's the number one search engine after Google, YouTube. So people are looking at pictures and video. And this is a place where you can draw more people in by giving them something interesting to look at. Um, I'll go down and show you our photos. They have multiple categories. You can have an overview. You can have the owner put them, the customer put them. You can have 360s, which I actually stood in the middle of my road out in front of my shop. And I'll show you how you can do this with any Android camera and post it and get Google to put it on your Google business page so people can see the front of your store on a 360 degree view. All right. So um, just one more little cool thing that we do. Uh, where am I at here? So anyway, I want to jump back here to insights. So we're going to live in the info button until everything's accurate, guys. All right. Every, get everything up to date there and keep that accurate all the time. Insights are some basic analytics. This is just Google's way of showing you what's happening. And I don't want to go into it too deep, but here's your search results. How many times? Here's the words they used to find you. Here's how many times people saw you, whether on the search page or on the maps page. Because remember, Google has maps and search. So there's two places you get listed when you put on this, this, uh, uh, this account. You set up this Google account. And then what did they do? What did the customers do from your Google page? We never had any of this activity. I, I'm just going to be totally honest with you. Until we started really working our page about a year ago, I would see five actions here. Uh, and it was very, very pitiful. And so to see that for absolutely no cost at all, I got 140 interactions in the last month. I mean, folks, I don't know how to tell you that that makes no sense to not use this product. I had 57 people go to my website, 32 asked for directions, and 47 of them picked up the phone and called me. And then that messaging feature I told you about, we had four different people use that too, where they don't even have to call. They're, they're interacting immediately with us in real time, and it's costing us nothing to have that product. So this is something that's huge for businesses. If they ask for directions, where did it come from? When they called, what day of the week, what time of day is the most popular? But here's the photo thing I wanted to show you. Look at this right here. 8,500 views of my photos in the last month. I have no idea why people want to look at my photos 8,000 times, but it put my business in front of them. It put my information in front of them. They were on my Google business page looking at my photos. What does that do? Number one, it, it gives re re repetition, but Google sees that activity. I'm a fresh cupcake now because somebody was just looking at my photos for 20 minutes. It's all about the algorithm being happy with you. So the more you can do, see, this is the quantity. We have over almost 200 photos, uh, you know, 60 by customers and 150 that we've posted compared to this company here who has 13. So it's obvious who's, who's Google going to engage with. They want us to be in front of their customers. This is a simple way to do it. Photos, photos, photos. Your reviews, I can't say enough how important it is to ask for the review. And this is the point at which I'm going to go ahead and give you my $2,000 Google My Business lesson. So make sure you're writing this down. Wave your hands if you don't get it. You need me to repeat it, okay? And Hannah, you're behind my camera, so wave to the side. <laughs> um, you ask for a review from every client you deal with. You go back to every client you've ever dealt with and you ask for a review. If you want to type up something generic and send it to them and say, hey, this is kind of what I do or something specific. Hey, this is kind of an overview of our business that we did together. Would you mind posting this on Google and maybe adding some of your own personal touch? Whatever you have to do to get a review on Google, do it. I actually pay 
every one of my employees $20 for every five-star review they get with their name in it. It makes no sense for them not to ask for it, but they're the ones they're dealing with the customers. And so I have to get them to remember. It's cost me a couple hundred bucks a couple of weeks. I'm not going to deny it. You get some very, very uh, motivated employees that know they can get a hundred dollar bonus by getting five Google reviews during a week. They're very motivated to go ahead and ask for that review. But here's how we do it. When we're done with the customer, we say, hey, um, would you mind if I text you a link to fill out the review? Because right now they're in a great attitude. They have a great feeling, fuzzy, warm. They're ready to go. Hey, will you let, leave me a review? Absolutely. So now they're looking for the text message. And here's the key, guys. I don't want to send them to a Google business page and just have them see, you know, um, let's, I'll just do this real time for you. If I just Google computers, so I'll Google com, computers, not even Dallas, Georgia, because I'm home. I Google computer and they come up with this, okay? So once they're here and, and they see this page here, um, I can send them here. Like I could take this link up here at the very top and I could send that link to somebody and say, leave me a Google review, right? But once they get here, now they have to go, okay, click on the reviews. You're gonna see my review. Um, if I hadn't left one, it would say edit your review or create a review, or they'd have to scroll down here. And right here, this button right here would say write a review, okay? I don't wanna make it that hard for everybody. And I also want to get a lot more activity. I don't want to just send them to my Google business page. I want them to go to my website. So let's pull up my website real quick and show you what I do there. First of all, it's simple. Don't put a lot of garbage on your website. Google hates that. Make it easy and simple to load. But if you scroll down just a little bit on my website, right here in this section is all these links for people to click on, okay? And one of them is review us on Google. Now, a lot of people don't have control of their websites, but I would, at, I, would, I would jump up and down if I had to, to get the IT guy or the corporation I work for or anybody who's holding me up from doing this. Let me put this button on my website. Now, why? A couple of things. There's this thing called a bounce rate. And when you have people come to your website, if they hit the back button or they close the tab, without completing whatever they came to do, that's considered a bounce. And a bounce, is, a, a bounce rate of 70% is okay still, that's not bad. But if we can drive the bounce rate down, that makes the Google algorithm very happy. There's more activity, more people stay at his website, they stay there longer, they complete what they came there to do. So if I have a client who wants to leave me a review, and I say, go to my website. First of all, it's easy to send them that link. I know the link to my own website. And then scroll just a little bit and click the review us on Google button. Now, what did I do? I got a visitor to my website. And to Google, that's like somebody pulled up in my driveway in front of my store. Because now they can't see my store, but they can see my online activity. So, wow, Robin had somebody pull up in his driveway. Awesome. Now they go to the website and they click a button. That is a completed website visit, which drops your bounce rate, which makes Google's algorithm really happy. But it also gave us a visit, a click, and then we get the review. And watch where this button takes me. This is something I want y'all to get. I don't want you to take me here. Uh, come on, mouse. I don't want to go here with that button. Where I want to go with that button is here because now i've eliminated any possibility that they're going to have a problem finding out where to review me now mine comes up pre-populated with my review because i've already left one but if i had not left a review yet this would have five white stars and a blank line and the thing for photos for people to leave the review for me so i've i've made it easier on my customer my client my my completed transaction to give me the review i've sent them directly where they need to be and I've increased my touch rate from one to three. All of those things, and I've dropped my bounce rate because somebody went to my website, finished their visit and clicked a button. So do you see how that's just a, a perfect example of when you're working with a company that does what they do and they're good at it. I talk to marketing companies all day long. They're like, that's genius. Why don't we do that? Because you're not smart. You don't understand what you don't understand. So yeah, right, Conrad? You don't understand what you don't understand. So, so 
when somebody who does this for a living says to you, hey, this is how you do it, make a star, make an asterisk, figure out how to do that, how to get that button there. I'll tell you right now that this whole big link up here at the top that I'm highlighting, that's the link I would use for my button. Once I'm on the page uh, and I'm ready to leave the review, let's see if I, if I just get somebody else up here, a uh, 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 car dealer, I don't know. I just do car dealerships and I get one of them. So we'll go to Universal Motors Google page and I'll scroll down to where it says write a review right here. See, so this is where my customer would have to go to to write the review. When I click it, it pops that button open. This right here at the very top in the address bar, that is what I would be copying. And that is what would be the link for that button on my website. Does that make sense? You actually want that code because that will make the window pop open whenever somebody comes to the website now to leave that review. And that's important because once again, you don't want to leave them here with no idea of where to leave the review. You want them to go directly to this because now it's super easy for them to do it. All right. So eliminate all the obstacles for them, make it as simple as possible and ask, ask, ask. All right, you, you, you're never going to get a review if you don't ask. What is a, a, a great basketball coach said? You will lose 100% of the games that you don't show up to play. <laughs> that's, just, that's just common sense, right? You have to show up, you have to engage, or you're not going to get it. So ask, ask, ask. You, you, you have to continue to ask. And, and it gets old. You're like, I feel like I'm kind of prostituting myself out a little bit. But the bottom line to it is people read reviews. We're not standing in our driveway asking our neighbor where he got his tires anymore. We're Googling best set of tires for a sports car. And then we're reading reviews about tires. Okay. So these great reviews that you're getting and your great responses to them, that's your neighbor telling you about the product. Yes, Jordan. Robin, uh, one of the many challenges of a hypnotherapy business is that uh, not a lot of people want to have their name on Google when they put a review on there. Is there a workaround for this? Absolutely. We don't put your Google page as a hypnotherapist. We put you as a uh, teacher, as an instructor, as a life coach. As We just make your Google business page a bunch of things that don't carry some stigma with them that make people not want to do that. And then they'll have no problem posting it. You know, make the category things that are very similar to what you do that have no stigma with them. Because I, I get that all the time from psychologists and therapists. And they're like, people don't want to tell them I went to a marriage counselor, you know? I mean, but quite honestly, if, if, if they got really good results, I think they'd want to tell the world, right? I mean, but, you know, we're, we're all limited by what we know and what we have. So, um, yeah, that is a challenge, Oregon, but it's something that can be worked around. And I'd love to talk to you offline about, you know, some creative ways to spin that. Google doesn't allow you to change the name. I thought I've seen some reviews for some products where the name on the review, I know it's not a real person's name. It's almost like a handle. Google doesn't allow you to do that when you yes, write. Them? You can. Uh, no, you can. You can put down Jorgen Therapy. You know, you don't have to be Atlanta hypnotherapy. No, I mean the person, I mean the person writing the review. Oh, okay. I got you. Whatever their, whatever their Google account is, is what it's going to come up as. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can't change your personal name when you're leaving the review. It's what you're logged into Google as. So when you see those, like I had a bunch of kids leave me reviews for my class one year and some of the names those kids had for their Google accounts was ridiculous. So uh, yeah, but you, you have to, that's what your Gmail account would be. Um, all right, so and kind of to wrap this all up, my calendar is just Calendly forward slash BBNB. That's for Be Better Not Bitter. That's my, my nonprofit, and that's who I am right now. This marketing idea, this Google thing is from a previous lifetime, and it allows me to give back because this relationship with Google is very helpful and very conducive to building relationships with business owners. And so that's why I continue to do it, and I continue to offer it as my give back to any business owner that's interested um, and again, I'll do 30 minutes with you real time, you know, looking at your page and going over what's best and what's not. Just can, you to, the, can you do the Calendly thing again? Okay, it's Calendly.com. Yep. And then it's just four letters, B-B-N-B. -B -B. Thank Be you. Be better, not bitter. 
Okay. Thank you. All right. And then um, I just wanted to go over a couple more things here on this website here. So when you come down here a little ways, there's this website that's listed. And it's like, wow, I, that's not my website. Why is this here? Google generates a completely complimentary website based on that info tab and your reviews and your photos and your posts. So all the information you're putting into Google My Business, they're gonna generate this free website for you. Now, if you look up here, it says, it's ilovemygeek.business.site, right? It's not .com. So you don't wanna hand out that domain name to people if you wanted to use this website. Google will sell you whatever domain name you want, as long as it's available, for $12 a year. That's the only thing you'll pay for is if you want your .com domain name to point at this website. If you want to buy it from Google, it's $12 a year, which is a real bargain because they include the privacy feature that most other domain companies charge for. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever registered a domain name for a website, but if you don't pay the extra money for privacy, you will get... 2,000 phone calls and emails from web development companies all over the world, mostly in India, wanting to ask you about your new business and what you're gonna do for your website. So I highly recommend if you ever buy a domain name, pay for the privacy or buy it from Google, they don't charge for the privacy. So, but you can have this website, which is actually a pretty cool little landing page, you know, for your, uh, for your, for your business. And, and it's all real time updated with, you know, your testimonials, here's five days ago. These things are all being real-time updated by Google as people leave us reviews. So um, it gives you all your photos updated constantly, has all your contact us information, and you have a little bit of control over format, style, colors. Not a lot, but you can see over here, there's some editing features um, where you can play with a few things and, and having a little bit of a, a SEO, if you will. Some keywords can be added in. So, um with that, I will say that I never use Google ads. I never pay for Google ads. Um, I feel that most people, and when we used to ask all the time, most people will avoid when it says ad next to the Google listing. And they'll go right down to that little map with the people underneath the map because they know that's the organic. Those are people that grounded out hardcore to get there and, and worked hard to get their reviews and stay active. And so that's who we want to mostly do business with. Um, so I don't recommend Google ads a whole lot. Not only that, they're very difficult. Um, through my nonprofit, we get a very large grant to use Google ads. And I actually have to pay somebody to do the ads for me. It's just, they're impossible. I don't know if you've ever looked at them, but they have some free um, offers when you're on this homepage here, where they'll offer to give you a hundred dollars in free advertising credit here, and they'll help run some free ads for you. But honestly, pay somebody to do Google work for you. Don't pay for Google ads. You'd be much better off you know, getting somebody to uh, get it set up for you properly, get everything updated properly and, and kind of coach you into how's the best way to uh, manage it and, and work it. Um, the button on your website, if, if I can't scream enough about that, you absolutely want that because that that makes the algorithm real happy. As Gabe said, he loved it when I said it makes the algorithm go hoo, 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 because that's, I mean, that's literally, it, it, it's, it's happy with you. It loves you and it wants to put you in front of its customers. It's sitting there waiting for somebody to search for computers right now in Dallas, Georgia, because it wants to put me in front of them so badly. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a free product. There's a lot more to it, uh, multiple locations. You can add other people to help you and and certainly I'd be glad to field any questions you have right now. And I look forward to serving each of you one-on-one -on -one in the future to get your stuff updated and working perfectly. So you won't have to have any struggles with that whatsoever. Any questions? Yeah, Robin, yes, some, right. of those, some of those links were really long. Would you put them bitly and make them smaller? You can, but Google doesn't care. Or your website usually doesn't care when you're putting a link for a button. It doesn't normally oh, care. Nobody's going to see it. it. Okay, it's going to be carried you. under a button. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yep. Kim. Unmute. Um, with your the uh, the business the locations. Yeah. The service areas. Now I service Canada, UK. You know I have some customers in the UK. Um, today when I was setting it up, I was putting Canada in the UK, and that is areas. But that's going to, as you were saying, that's that's going to hinder me, not help me. 
it's going to dilute it because you're getting too big. And, and remember, the very first slide I showed you on that slide deck was local search. So they get a little bit touchy when you start getting that area too big. Okay. You'll have to get them some other way. Those people have to find you some other way. I would limit it back down to the southeast and then do my social media, you know, hashtags and stuff to get it put in front of other people. Okay. Yeah. I've been getting other countries through Instagram. So that's. Yeah. There you go. I would work it that way. Absolutely. Tara, what do you want to ask? Um, I'm sorry if I missed it. Where do we get that button from? And then I was wondering too, if we can have our, if there's a way to have our Google reviews show up on our website, our actual website. Absolutely. Great questions. The button you're going to create yourself. So that's something, or your web guy, whoever takes care of your website for you. That's something that's just going to be added in. And you'll, as you see with ours, we have the button for review us on Google. We have the review us on Facebook. You can jump to our shopping page. And these are two remote access software programs we use. So we have a little link area. And that's something that we just created ourselves to be able to launch those, those links. All right. And then you asked the second question. Yeah. Um, is there a way to have those Google reviews also show on the actual website page too? Absolutely. So with the Google website that I showed you, they're automatically updated there. There are third party apps that you can use that will call your, you let it log into your Google business account and you give it the information for your website. You put a little piece of code on the website and it will stream your updated reviews to your website. Now, what those are, I, I'm not very familiar with them. We haven't looked into them in a while, but uh, if you just Google, you know, how do I get my Google reviews on my website? You'll come across a couple of third-party programs that do that. And I will tell okay. you the ones that I've looked at for WordPress, they don't put all of your reviews if you've got a bunch and they don't let you choose which one, it's gonna pull in like the last five. Okay. So you don't have a lot of control of which reviews show up okay, or, or the number. Okay. Awesome. 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 Yeah. And I've noticed that too. So what I've found is um, uh, we manually do it. We'll just manually take the JPEGs of screenshots of a few of them and post them on the, on the website and just change them, you know, every week or so. Robin, what's your rate to check and see if someone has a business site and if not start from scratch or look at what you do have and make it the way it's supposed to be. Do you, do you have an hourly rate? We just have a flat rate for that, Jody. I thank you very much for asking because I, I really wasn't here to promote myself today, but I guess everybody does want to know. The 30 minutes to go over it and check it are free. So you just, you know, you want to hook up on my calendar and we'll review it. Now, if you decide, hey, this is too much. I don't want to deal with this. Handle it for me. We charge $750 to get everything in place, to get everything working properly, to get everything verified. And then for about two to three weeks, to harass you incessantly to do what you're supposed to do, to build, <laughs> Conrad's like, yeah, buddy, to build that repetition in, we use a texting program that's gonna text you with the link in the texting program. Go post on Google, go ask for the review, you know, do what you're supposed to do. So it's 750 flat rate, and that's like up to three weeks of coaching. Robin, okay, Kim? you know, I can't put the, button on my web page because that's the Lavelle page. Right. Um, but like how you made that QR, QR code for me for my web page, could I do a QR code for leave a Google review? Yes, absolutely. You're a hundred percent on track. Yes. So I was like, cause I'm trying to figure out, cause I can post that on Instagram. I can post a can you post a QR code on Instagram? Well, if you're going to do that, just get the bit.ly and just post the link. Yeah. Like, like Lorraine was saying, take that, great big long, okay. yeah, you take that great big long link that, that I showed you when the window's open yeah. and put that into Bitly and get a little tiny link for it. And you can into text what? that to Bitly? Bitly. What is that? Bitly. B-I-T dot L-Y. Now you only get a few free per month with Bitly. They'll only shorten a few per month and then they want you to pay for it. But um, yeah, just grab it and shorten it so that you're not sending somebody this crazy link. Um, and just send them a bit.ly and then the QR code could be made from that bit.ly as well. All right. QR codes, by the way, when they look really, really busy, it's because it was a really, really long address. The shorter the address, the less little notches you have on your QR code. So using bit.ly for QR codes 
is huge. I, I put one of those into uh, the QR code generator one day and this QR code that came out was like a jigsaw um, a crossword puzzle. It was so, so many squares, but uh, shorten it with bit.ly and then it'll give you a good QR code. Hey, Robin. Yes, ma'am. Someone has, like whenever I had somebody actually look at my stuff, they told me that I have two business accounts. Is I don't even know how to figure that out, which is, shows how, how much I don't know, right? Well, well, but we'll I that. guess when I very first started, I must have somehow managed to set that up. So maybe if I set some time and maybe just pay you 750 to have you straighten me out. Could that, can you straighten that part we out? absolutely can. Look, part of being a high impact Google partner is we have some connections with, with the Google business people. So right. well, where, where you, you would fight with an 800 call to somebody who might not speak English as first language, I can send an email and get an answer in about five minutes. So yes, I absolutely can help you with that. And let's get together and go over it on your see. calendar and we'll just, uh, yeah, have it might be something, easy. it might be something to be solved really easily on a free phone call on a free zoom call. Yeah. So yeah. Let's see I would love to have call. you help fix the period. So we'll just okay. see what we can do. <laughs> well, thank you. Adon. I appreciate that. I know it's not my area of expertise. I know how to fix tax problems. That's not what I know how to do. And go. I have learned that I get off in the weeds and then I don't get what I'm supposed to be doing done, which is where my passion is. So yeah, I got to talk to Conrad about that time management, baby. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess pretty much to wrap up, looks like we've got just a couple minutes left. Uh, Melinda, go ahead. I have a client that I just rebuilt their website and their organic Google listing is going to not their homepage, but to their contact.html page, which is no more. And they spend buku bucks on Google ads. And my Google AdWords person says she cannot help me with this issue because it's organic. Do you have a way or a contact to get the site crawled again? Do you see this info button right here? Yes. You see this domain name right here. Yep. That's I've all that has to be changed. It. I've already checked it. It's, it's correct. It's just the homepage. It's not the contact page. Yeah, that sounds like something in, oh, that's a deeper issue than that. Um, yes, I can absolutely contact them. If you want to uh, just shoot me an email uh, with the information about who it is so I can go check the links out, and I can send it to my people and go, hey, can you figure out why this is doing this? Okay, awesome. Thank you. But why don't, Melinda, why wouldn't you just create that page again and have it revert right to the main page? Do you, know, you know what I mean? I mean, it, just it, point it, the one that's going the wrong way. Go no, that, that's a good workaround. Yeah, when they go but to then, contact, then they're goes, getting then they're getting redirected, and there is a delay, and it might seem weird. But I could do that. I would just do a redirect on that old page. I, I don't think it might it might not even be noticeable. Okay. Yeah, possibly. Thank you. I appreciate that suggestion.